Well, here we are, 2021, and this is a new series from John Ruffle here in Birmingham, England, and I uh, trust that you all are well, um, and that uh, this year will be one that draws us all closer to Jesus, regardless of what happens and what we have to face. Those of you new to the channel, welcome. Um, if you're watching and you haven't yet subscribed, please do subscribe. Click the subscribe button, the like button, or if you need to, the dislike button, um, and leave your comments below. It's really uh, key to me and to us, my family, um, this year that we try to really up our ante and get this channel moving because we've got some exciting things in the pipeline which are going to be revealed very very soon now you might remember that before um the new year i did um a two a two show series on the book of revelation just an overview it's on my heart to continue with that and especially I want to address those of you that perhaps didn't see the earlier video or who didn't understand it or took issue with what I was sharing. Um, and I want to make a few, I, I, I don't want to upset people and, you know, rub people up the wrong way for no reason. Um, I want to look at the Bible this year, um, as always, with a sincerity, a search for the truth, regardless how painful that might be to not only to you watching, but to me personally, uh, because if we're not seeking to walk in the truth, then our faith and our Christianity, frankly, is in vain. I'm sure you will all agree with that. And um, so, I want to jump in with a couple of overview comments about the book of Revelation. Now, I think most of us are aware of the fact that it's labeled as apocalyptic literature. It's like visionary literature. Um, it's prophetic. If we look at the Old Testament, we had the Old Testament prophets who were foretelling the future. And in the New Testament, under the regime of the Holy Spirit given um, to those who are followers of Jesus Christ, we have the Holy Spirit and he is the spirit of prophecy. And it's not only foretelling, but forthtelling. So the proclamation of the gospel comes through the inspir inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But there are times when the Holy Spirit will foretell as well. And the book of Revelation, being apocalyptic, being visionary, um, you can't just read it from chapter one and go from chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four to 22 chronologically and expect it to make perfect sense. The first three chapters do. Most people can get a grasp on the first three chapters, but after we get from the first three chapters, then things get a little bit complicated. And one way of viewing it is to see it as um, a series of events that happen and are retold through different perspectives or different lenses. So you've got overlaps. Um, it's rather like one of those Russian dolls where you take the lid off the Russian doll and then you find another Russian doll inside. And so you take that Russian doll and take the lid off. Lo and behold, a slightly smaller Russian doll inside there. And then you take the lid off that and you find an even smaller Russian doll. Sometimes six, seven, eight Russian dolls all uh, clustered together. And I think if we look at the book of Revelation, or when you're reading the book of Revelation and your own personal study time and quiet prayerful time, first of all, do read it prayerfully. And don't read it with your intellect switched on and buzzing at a thousand watts. Um, be still, know that I am God, 
the Lord said to us, you know, be still, have that quiet. And don't try to, oh, what is all this talking about? But allow the Lord to, to come to you in it, rather like the waves of the sea on the seashore. And I think you'll find that it makes it a lot easier to, to grasp it, if not to understand it, if we see it as interlocking pieces in a puzzle, rather like the nesting egg principle I just explained to you. And I say that because we have to understand that heaven and heavenly realm is beyond the time space continuum in which we are locked into here on earth. So here on earth, we have the dimension of time, you know, the hours, the days, the seasons, and we have the concept of space. And of course, we've conquered both those. Uh, you can watch a film, a documentary film shot a hundred years ago and see exactly what was happening at that period of time, a hundred years ago. And we can travel at very fast rates, if it wasn't for COVID-19 anyway, to other parts of the world. So our world is expanded, but still as physical beings, we are limited to the time space continuum. But God is not, and when he grants revelation, whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, God is not bound by this time space continuum. He has something more that is beyond just our natural sense. And because it's beyond, we can also understand or hopefully grasp the fact that when God speaks, it's beyond our natural understanding. So we need to begin to go beyond the pure milk of the word and into the mind of God. You know, the epistles talk about us having mind of God, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind, Romans chapter 12. Be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And a terrific way to do that is by gentle meditation upon the scriptures. And I hope that you'll do that, join with me in doing that this year. Book of Revelation, it's, first of all, it's not a fiction. Um, if, you, if you begin to try to make it play like someone sat down and wrote, how are we going to interpret the terrible persecution that is now coming upon the church? Let's give the church a bit of comfort. Let's write something allegorical about the emperor Nero and the persecution of Christians. And... Uh, if we do that, then we're mistaking um, allegory for apocalyptic literature. It's not a parable. Uh, it's apocalyptic. It's visionary. But that doesn't make it less true. If anything, it actually makes it more true, but beyond our own understanding to comprehend. Right. I'm going to continue this on the next video and I want to look at Revelation chapter 13 and I think this is going to be really interesting and I might bring up a few visuals as well at that time. So I'm going to see you on the other side and this is John Ruffle. Take, I was going to say take care, take God this year and trust in him because all things are working together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. And if you are seeking to love and serve Jesus Christ, then you can be assured that you are called according to his purpose and that he will guide and direct you throughout this year.